how do you do your makeup? And so I'm going to go ahead and make a video for those who would like to know. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. So firstly, I just got out of the shower, so that's why I have this on. But before I do my makeup, I like to put on a little bit of lotion. If you're like me and have oily skin, you know that lotion can make your skin even more oily. But in this video, I'm going to show you a little hack that I've learned to help keep down the oiliness of your skin. So, <clears throat> if you're going to go ahead and do what I'm going to recommend, make sure you apply a generous amount. Otherwise, your makeup will end up looking splotchy and just kind of nasty. Um, if I'm not wearing this pink thing, I typically either wear... Um, like a headband or just something that I can use to get the hair out of my face so that way I don't have makeup sticking. Um, that's just something that I've found is very helpful. So I've heard for people with oily skin that using milk of magnesium on your face can tremendously hold down the oil and I know that's weird because why would you put a laxative on your face but until I actually did it I was like dang this actually works so you're gonna apply like a little bit not a whole lot because it'll dry your skin out a lot so I just really like to focus and put it on the areas that I generally get a lot of oil and then you just kinda wanna rub it in so that way it dries evenly um, for me, I like to avoid getting too close to my under eye because if it's too thick, when I put on my concealer and foundation, it starts to like, not separate, but it just, it like comes off really weird. So, I don't know if that's just because it's old, because I put it in like this container instead of the jar because I ran out, but... I probably just need to get some new one. So, go ahead and let this dry. And then, we'll get started on foundation. You can see that it's, it's kind of sticky. So, after I put this on, I don't even use a primer because I just treat this like my primer. Because it's got like a nice sticky hold and everything. Um, in the video, I'll also put in, like, what types of makeup I use. Um, I'll just include, like, a little picture. So, I got my... Where is it? One second. <clears throat> so, I've got my little beauty blender here. And I... I've been using L'Oreal True Match. It looks like this. It's a pump version, so when you run out, you know you run out because you can't pump anymore. But I typically like to do like three pumps, two, sometimes two and a half, and then I'll take some on my finger and then just kind of like blot it in circles so that way when I go to blend it, I don't have to move the product around because it's already where it generally needs to go. More on my finger, and then once it's not coming off of the beauty blender anymore, I'll go ahead and blend away. Another thing with the uh, milk of magnesium, you want to be careful to not over blend because it'll look weird. But if you run into a problem, just bear with me because once you put on powder on top it's like you can't even see it anymore so I'm gonna go ahead and blend my makeup in <clears throat> this color is probably a slight bit too dark for me just from coming home and not being able to tan anymore because COVID's taking over and shutting down everything so I haven't been able to tan for a while so don't judge me if you notice that this is too dark. I'm working with what I got. So, you just really want to, like, do it 
not too much, like I said, because of the milk of magnesium on your face. <laughs> those areas and everything gets covered up pretty well so I have red skin sometimes and oily skin like I said and sometimes I'll get like acne you could see I got some on my face but I found a really good concealer that I'm going to show you guys that I absolutely love and it's by Glamouflage, or hand, Hard Candy. It looks like this. You can get it at Walmart. It's super cheap. Um, I actually put some in my old, like, loose powder, translucent stuff. And then mixed it with my dark foundation. Because when I got it, I got it in the winter time. And my skin wasn't as dark. So I have to mix it in with my dark foundation to make it look a little better. And then I like to kind of mix it in a little. You can see it like looks kind of weird. But I'll take some to the sides and then like mix it in with my little brush here. That I've designated for this purpose because it can get kind of nasty. Um, if you don't have like a cup you can put it on like a. You could probably just put it on your beauty blender and just kind of mix it around with your finger. But you do want to make sure that it's a nice even consistency. Um. If it's a little lighter, that's okay because typically you want these areas of your face to be a little lighter, including right here, your nose, and maybe your upper lip. But I, I typically focus on my under eyes because I have lots of bags under them and they're really dark. Shout out to nursing school. And then I'm going to put it over my acne and any other areas that I know can get a little red or whatever. So I'm done with that. <clears throat> I look kind of goofy right now, but I'm just gonna go ahead and blend it. That it's kind of on my chin, it like made a weird circle because of the milk of magnesium. Which is fine. I used to bake my face after doing this, but I do not do that anymore. Um, you can do it if you like to. It's just, I, I just found it wasn't really working for me that great. It's probably because I didn't have good actual powder to do that, but I just stick to just doing powder instead. <clears throat> but you can still bake your face if you want to. Perf perfectly fine and personal choice and preference depending on what you like so, a little clumpy over here but that's fine all right so it's all blended in bags are pretty much gone acne it's kind of there but it's fine acne is just one of those things you just kind of got to get over and just accept it because it's a natural part of going through stress, puberty, nursing school, like I said before. And if people are being mean to you about it, then you shouldn't be their friend because everyone has it. Everyone will get it. So I like to just use a basic CoverGirl Clean. Mine's the shade 125 Buff Beige. And I got my little powder. I just kind of go like this and kind of just pack it in on my under eyes to really make sure that it's set and this is honestly why I stopped baking my face because I'll put on not a lot but a generous amount of powder and that way it's already there it's already set and I don't have to go through waiting for my face to bake or whatever so I just like to focus this all over my skin you can get this at Walmart too. It's not too expensive. Covered up really nice. My chin, but it's whatever. You can tell 
which areas have not gotten powder because they're kind of shiny right now. But once I get that powder in, it literally seals it in. And it's so nice because with my oily skin I put powder on and then probably within 30 minutes you could already see oil just leaking through and once I figured out that you can put milk and magnesium on your face I've literally done it ever since you just have to make sure that you moisturize because it it will it sucks all the oil out of your skin and it'll make your face feel really weird and tight and might even start like cracking or peeling like a face mask would so face is all good it's all set all um the same color which is good so i got this little um thing from marshall's it was five bucks and this is what i use to contour my face so i'm gonna go ahead and start that i just used a nice little brush that i gotten in my ipsy bag um let's see it's for small contour and that's what i'm doing so i'm gonna go ahead and go in with this light shade it's literally almost gone I gotta get some more but I always do lightest to darkest because it's always easier to build up color than it is to start dark and then try and go back so I just do like circular motions on my cheekbones where I know that my natural contour is and I just kind of like build build upon that kind of going in the circular motions that you can see and then I'm going to go ahead and get some more of the color on my brush and then do the other cheek. If you don't know where you contour, if you go like this, you just kind of naturally follow that line, but you don't want to go all the way from your mouth. You just kind of want to go where your cheeks are. This color that I use, there's other colors in here. Well, there's a yellow one, but I don't even, I've never used a yellow one. I think my skin tone's not yellow, so I'm not going to use that. Alright, so I got the base color on, and next I'm going to go ahead and go with the next second to darkest color. And I got to be careful because this is where you can get kind of carried away. But I don't want to make it too dramatic because I'm not really going out or doing anything today. I'm just kind of making this video. <clears throat> so with this, I kind of I kind of just like tap it in and let the brush do all the work. I'm not smearing it. I'm just literally just tapping it. Get some more up on my hairline. That way it's not like you don't see the lightness foundation. And if you do get it into your hairline, the better it is because it looks more natural that way. I think it does. And then I'm going to just do a little bit more on this side. Sometimes I have a hard time matching up with my cheeks are the same. It's hard to tell. Okay, so it looks kind of dark right now, but that's okay because I'll probably put on more powder later. So next, I'm just going to go ahead and do some bronzer that I've also gotten from Walmart. It's super old, so old that it, the lid broke off of it, but you can see it's pretty, it's pretty shiny. And this is by So Baked Bronzer uh, 30 Tropics. I honestly don't even know if they make this kind anymore because I've had it for so long but I just really just focus up through this whole area I don't use a whole lot just kind of use it to make everything um, spread out and just a really nice finish with this I do kind of drag my brush across my face you can see to just kind get it in there and I really do put a lot of oomph behind it to just like really make sure like it's packed not packed but like you know what I mean um okay <clears throat> next my face is basically done at this point but I, I do like to use a little bit of blush just to make it look nice and of course I oh there it is okay so I also got this in my Ipsy bag. Shout out to Ipsy. It's pretty great. 
Um, this is just like a nice like orangey color, pinky color, you can see. My little um, blush brush here, it's pretty big, pretty light and feathery, and I'll just do that a couple of times. And then I like to press it underneath my eyelids because it just makes like a more natural, natural look if you don't just have it like in one spot. So I'll go like that and then kind of just like bounce it up and down and then just kind of like pull it up a little bit. And then I'll do the same thing to the other side. This also kind of makes people look more tan too, I think. So if you're trying to look a little more tan, you could just go with a, a color of blush that's really good for your skin tone. Whether that's orangey or pinky or a little brownie color. But I just like to do that because it just, I don't know, it just kind of puts it all together. <clears throat> Alright, now I'm going to do my eyebrows. A lot of people compliment me on my eyebrows. It's really something that I have progressed with over the years. I used to do, I, I didn't even used to do my eyebrows in like middle school or high school really. But my first, or my senior year of high school I started getting into it. And let me tell you, they were literally blocks. So a good one that I've been using probably for like two weeks now is the CoverGirl. Um, it's about... $8 is kind of expensive. Another th crappy thing is it doesn't really last that long for me. But this is the color Soft Brown by CoverGirl. Easy Breezy Brow, Micro Fine, and Definer. So it comes with a twistable thing that you can use and then a spoolie end. So I always like to brush out my eyebrows because there might be foundation in there or a little bit of that milk of magnesium on there. So I always just brush them off and make sure that they're nice and clean. Kind of brush them up a little bit. Probably need to trim my eyebrows too, but it's fine, it's whatever. So I'm gonna start with like the insides of my brows. You guys can see while I'm doing this. And then I'm just gonna draw a line up to make like the first little brow feather and then just kind of every so often make little upward slanted marks that follow my natural eyebrow and then I'm gonna go around on this side and then kind of make the tail and this one's kind of running out which is why I have my other one ready for me so I'm gonna go ahead and open this one up with these, I like how they open up really easily. Like, boom, it's already out. So, <clears throat> I think this one's a little darker color than that one. It is. That's fine. The other one I did was Honey Brown, which I like that one, but they didn't have that one when I looked. So, one of my eyebrows might be a little darker than the other, but it is what it is. Um, if you don't know, like, Let's say you don't have eyebrows that kind of are naturally shaped. You can always do this to see where you need to start and then make like little lines. So you always go from the end of your nose, boom, over your iris, and then you can make that line right there. And then the end of it follows your natural curve of your eye. So mine would be right here. So then I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing and draw the upward brow lines. Try and do them as thin as possible so it looks more natural and feathered like. And not so blocky. Which I'm pretty sure we've all seen a sister out there that has blocky brows. But if that's what the look you're going for, then you can do it. I've got the bottom part done. Right now they're looking a little scary. I don't care. It's fine. So I'm going to take the top of it <clears throat> and then just kind of like create that natural arch. And then follow it down. So it's nice and thin. And then I'm going to lightly fill it in. And then take the 
spoolie and then just kind of like blend it in there so that's one eyebrow so you can see and I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side following that line that I made so I know where to arch it and then fill it in this color is definitely way too dark for me <laughs> that's fine I probably just won't do my eyebrows my eyebrows on. I'm going to fix this one up a little bit. So there's my eyebrows. They're looking a little intense, but that's all right. So now I'm going to go ahead and highlight my underbrow. Um, I don't remember where I got this from. Oh, no, I don't. Anyways, um, this is a holographic disco stick. You can see. I got my little brush here. And I'm just going to like put some of this on there. Then I'm going to basically paint this on the underside of my brows. Just to give it that like highlight look some definition and to accentuate the curves. I know some people like to clean up their eyebrows with um, concealer and that works good too. I've just never done that. I've always done this. That way I can highlight my brows and clean them up at the same time. <clears throat> so I'm done with that part and then I'm going to go over it with another highlighter that I had gotten from my Ipsy bag. You can see here it's a pretty nice color it's pretty bright so I'm just gonna go in that same brush don't even clean it just save your brushes and then I'm just gonna make a small little line underneath my brows to highlight them and get them nice and sparkly highlighted looks kind of weird right now I know so the other side of this brush is what I use to get my base colors on this palette is kind of nasty looking I know but it's the Jaclyn Hill palette and it's got quite a bit of colors as you can see I use some more than others but right now I'm gonna go ahead and go in with this one and I just use that as my base honestly for my eyeshadow <clears throat> um, like I said when I was contouring my face it's a lot easier to start off with light colors than it is to start with dark colors and then try to lighten it. So I always like to build a foundation um, pretty much with any color I'm going to use. It doesn't really matter. I'm always going to start with a neutral tan nude color just so that way if I do have any um, like oil or anything on my eyelid it just kind of soaks it up and makes the rest of it go on pretty pretty nicely um so I'm just gonna go ahead and gradually build up with the colors that were right next to it and then just kinda just follow the same shape that I was doing but stopping above my natural you can see it my natural like crease line here <clears throat> gonna do the same thing for the other eye Kind of get it out in that edge a little bit. And then I'm going to go in with a slightly darker nude color. And this is the part where I just generally have it focused in like a triangular shape. I'm going to go here and then here. And I do this because it kind of makes your eyes appear as if they're more open and more awake. Then I'm going to go ahead and change my brushes because I think I'm going to go in with a little bit darker brown today. Feeling a little scandalous. Alrighty. This one's kind of a burnt, burnty orange. You'll probably be able to see it on there. Just going to kind of go over my eyelid a little bit. 
and kind of branch it out. I'm going to do the same thing to the other eye. Top like I did to the other. Feather it out. Then I'm going to go in with a little bit darker color. I know this color is pretty strong. You'll be able to see this one. But just kind of to smoke it out a little bit. <clears throat> like so. This is my look that I do literally every single day. Just because it's the easiest, it's the quickest. It doesn't take too much time. Alright, now I'm going to go in with a slightly darker color and mainly just focus this on my eyelid and outward. And bring it outward. Make sure to be careful to not do too much because you might get fallout like I just did. So I'm just going to take my light contour brush and just kind of swoop that away. Alright, so I always like to do some type of shimmer in the middle. I think today I'm going to go ahead and do a gold shimmer. You can see it's very, very bright. So I'll typically put that on in the, in the corner because that's where I don't really have any product yet. And then I'll just kind of pull it back to let it naturally just mix. If you have a brush, you can use a brush too, but I like to use my finger just because I think it spreads on better because your fingers are, fingers naturally have oil on them, so the oil combined with the makeup eyeshadow works really nice. So you can see that it's on there, and then I'm going to clean my finger because it's kind of got some eyeshadow on it, and I'm going to do the same thing to the other eye, starting in the corner. Sometimes I'll go back in and smoke it out if anything got touched or anything like that. And then I like to take a lighter shimmer color. I don't know if you can see it very well. And then I just like to put this in the corner of my eyes. Just to accentuate it to make it look like they're open. I do for my eyeshadow not too crazy some might think it's crazy but I think it's pretty alrighty now I'm gonna go ahead and do some uh, mascara I like to do my lower lashes first just because I don't know that way I don't forget about it I guess so just like to a bit. I got this mascara from my ipsy bag it's kind of old but it works good. I only use it for my lower lashes. So any mascara works, whatever you like. And for my top lashes, I typically like to use a waterproof mascara just so that way I can get the all day effect and it doesn't peel off, chip off. I don't get like little flakes under there. Because I notice I'll get that with other mascaras. The one that I've been using currently is um, the L'Oreal Voluminous Lash Paradise. I love it. I think it works so good. And this one's also waterproof. And I think the color is blackest black. So if you like to do that, try it. You can get it at Walmart. It's like 8 bucks, I think. And it lasts a long time. So that's just something I love. I know people are always asking me what kind of, like, what kind of um, mascara do you use? I can never remember what it's called, but now I remember. So for my top lashes, I'm going to go ahead and curl them because I don't know if you guys are like me, but my lashes naturally point downward. 
And so before I even start my makeup, I always crimp them a little bit and then just put on some like very light mascara just so I don't look so tired. And it opens up my eyes a lot more, so um, that's why I do that. <laughs> so I'm just going to go ahead and show you guys how I curl them. Just make sure I get all of them. Um, I got this eyelash curler from Marshalls for, I think, $4. And then it also came with the little inserts, the rubber part. And then I used to use this one from Marshalls. But the rubber inserts kept indenting too much when I would push down on my eyelashes. So I was like, I need to get a new one. So, so far I've been using the purple one. I've gone through so many of them. It's kind of crazy. Um, but I'll I'll do I'll do this for a while just to make sure that they hold good and they're staying where they need to stay and that way they don't point downward. Um, cuz I I like to look awake, not sleepy. But sometimes if I'm really hot or if I'm crying, they'll start to droop downwards just because that's the the, the way that my lashes typically are. This spot right here is from me pushing down, but it'll go away. So if that happens to you and you start freaking out, don't worry. It'll go away. So I'm just gonna go ahead and crimp the other side. Um, looking at other mascaras that I use, a lot of these I got in my Ipsy bag. This one's called Boom Bastic Lash Volumizer Mascara. I use that one a lot. Um, this one's called Damn Girl by Too Faced. That one's also a really good one. <clears throat> and then the one that I used on my bottom lash. I already showed that one to you guys. They all work really good though. So I'm just going to hold this for a little bit longer. Is there up? Like the spot already went away almost. Okay, so I'm gonna use my L'Oreal Lash Paradise. This one is honestly kind of getting kind of old. And I'm just gonna go ahead and put this on my lashes. Nothing going on good. Well, I used to put on false lashes like every single day in high school and that was a lot of work that really just I don't know what I was thinking but now I don't and it saves me so much time but if you go do the lashes or the artificial lashes um don't forget to take them off every day and just make sure you use good glue that isn't gonna rip off your natural eyelashes because I've had that happen to me and that's not fun then it takes a while for your eyelashes to grow back and it's just not not a good not a good uh, situation to be in I try and go natural when it comes to eyelashes out or like a fancy um, occasion or a special a special something like a wedding or um, some type of party I'll just put on some falsies so this is my makeup almost done you can see lashes look good everything pretty much looks decent I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit more powder on the top just to kind of get it all blended together in case I miss some spots. And if my contour was too dark, I would definitely go over it with some more powder anyways. <clears throat> if I wanted to do a wing, I would do wing. 
Um, lately I haven't been doing a whole lot with the wings. Um, but if I was feeling it, I would use this little guy that I also got in my Ipsy bag. And it's really nice. It's really cute too. It's got like a little, a little kitty cat on it. Um, but I'm not going to do one today. I'll probably make another video of me putting on wings. Spread your wings and fly. So with highlighter, I've got this like really, really shiny one. Um, I'll just put a little bit on my cheekies. You can see it's pretty bright. Cheek. A little bit down the bridge of my nose. And then above my cupid's bow. <clears throat> and then I like to do my lips I always put chapstick on before I do my makeup too just because I don't like to get the foundation on my lips so after I'm done putting on my makeup I will wipe off the foundation off my lips because believe it or not you'll get foundation on your lips my ipsy bag I just like it it's like a smooth like chapstick type of type of deal and then I like to blot it off so it's not like as intense I'll put a little uh, chapstick on top of it. And that pretty much keeps my lips that, that color like almost all day. And so there you have it. My makeup routine every day. Just about. And it only takes you about 40 minutes. So it's kind of a long time. But if you cut out some steps. Like today I cut out doing a wing. Um, there's also like other things you can do to cut out your steps, um, but this is generally how long it takes me to get ready. Thanks for watching.